Hello everyone, my name is Sayans, and today I'll be giving you 5 essential tips you should learn before starting to run The Simpsons Hit and Run. Over the many years I have been involved with the community, since 2013, many changes in speedrun tech have come and gone as new ways of running the game are discovered. Now I am no world record holder, <clears throat> except 80%, but no one really gives a fuck about that. But thanks to the many great runners over the years such as Pessimistic Mango, Pet Iguana, Cookie, Liquid Wi-Fi and so on, they have always brought either a new way to damage cars in particular missions, or manipulate AI to cooperate better, or even new coin routes. The usual way to start running the game is by watching the world record run, and trying to implement as much of his run into your own. Liquid Wi-Fi is currently the world record holder with a 13131. Now however his run is incredibly good, I wouldn't say it is fully wise to replicate what he does in his run with your own. Let me explain. Liquid uses a very optimised coin route which takes advantage of free wasps and skipping big chunks of coins which sometimes save a minimal of 15 seconds. Not trying to say his route is stupid in any way, it's currently the fastest way to beat the game. The reason I mentioned following Liquid's run fully isn't wise is due to how tight his coin route is. If you had to miss free wasps, boxes, or you get busted, this will damage your coin route in a massive way. How to fix this problem? If you have ever watched my stream, you will notice I have a 3 digit number next to the final split in each level of the game. Those numbers are actually how many coins the world record has after each level. Now it's no perfect reference to follow, it gives me good guidance if I will be okay heading into the three important parts of the run where being on top of my coin route matters. The car built for Homer, Globex super villain car, and lastly the zombie car. Now I'm going to read out a statement from Liquid Wi-Fi regarding how the free wasp system works and how he implements it into a full game run. Free bees are obtained when a player hits the wasp with the car, providing the wasp is at a height near the top of the car. This works for the first two wasps on every level. After that, the hitbox for the wasp whilst the inner car disappears almost entirely. The wasps after that are obtained on foot. On a rare occasion though, the wasp hitbox can be just perfectly set up to get destroyed by the car. This is never consistent though and happens so obscenely rarely that it's impossible to incorporate into a route. I'm going to show the free wasp you should attempt to go for. Keep in mind, if you miss one, you can always grab one of the others, if you perform it precisely enough. However, if you are for example to get the free wasp in Vox Nerdily, then miss both free wasps in the next mission, then get out and kill a wasp on foot, this will ruin the two free wasp mechanic, and which means getting the additional wasps you may have needed will now take more time to acquire or must be completely skipped. This is why it's essential to stick to the guide I am providing in the description and video to make sure you do not waste extra wasp coin opportunities. Let's return to the main part, the coin route. Now I believe following Liquid's run fully isn't the wisest of ideas, I would advise using his run for a lot of the run in terms of learning. Such as strategies used in missions, movement to and from and during missions, and majority of the coin route. However, I'm going to show off areas where pools of coins can be found, which I advise grabbing early on in your speedrun career. These areas where lots of coins are kept can waste between 15 to 30 seconds, but they can provide you with a much safer and more consistent coin route to follow, which makes finishing runs easier and sometimes faster compared to say working with a tougher route and being short on coins which requires you to farm coins which are much more inconvenient to grab.
It is commonly asked to us runners what console do we play on. The various consoles Hit and Run was made for is PC, PS2, Xbox and GameCube. Emulator is feasible when practicing or learning the game, but is banned from full game or level runs, so I advise against it. PC is by far the best console to be speedrunning Hit and Run on, due to faster loads and the frame rate. In fact, only 13 out of the 62 runners run on consoles. That is only a minimal 8%. If you are to run Simpsons Hit and Run in all its natural glory on PC, you will find when you drive your car up crescents and hills, your car boosts an unnatural amount. This can make it hard to control your car, and also AI cars can be affected by this as well. Many runners such as myself, Liquid and Robot and Cookie play on usually a higher frame rate, around 119 to 122 frames per second. You may be wondering, how can I alter my frame rate? The answer is Simpsons Mod Launcher, made by the Donut Team. This amazing community have come together and brought Hit and Run back to life, providing a wide range of mods. Heck, they even made a whole new game implemented into Hit and Run. By downloading the mod launcher, this will give you a great essential access to many useful features which will help you with your speedrun learning, such as unlock all missions and the most important feature, the frame limiter. Keep in mind, before running the game, you should check the rule set on the leaderboards to make sure you're not doing anything which can have your run rejected on the leaderboards. I highly advise as a newcomer to either start your frame rate between 80 to 100 frames per second. The speed boost will not be as impactful, but you will have a better control of your car and less chances of running into AI dilemmas. Some of you may have noticed many top runners constantly flicker around with the camera a lot. The reason this is done is to despawn traffic and pedestrians. By doing this, this can prevent traffic cars from blocking yourself or AI cars you are meant to be following, and also reduce the chances of getting hit and run, which is heavily caused by running over pedestrians. During a hit and run, it can cause you to drive off course, even missing coin opportunities, and also sometimes failing the mission. So I find this method essential to have down before doing full game runs. The game allows you to assign two buttons for the same action, so I recommend if you're using, for example, a PS2 or PS3 controller, to assign down on your right analog stick as one, and also L2 as the other. This game's physics, well, are not really the best. Runners tend to find themselves sideways with their cars such as the Canyonero and various other cars. What are ways of preventing this? When taking a turn, try to neutral roll your way around a turn or use the brake reverse button rather than just purely using e-brake. Another cool tip with driving is an example where you have to reverse then quickly move forward. I'm going to use the mission Bonfire of the Manatees as my reference. When pushing Cletus' truck into the arcade area and you begin ramming into the back of his car, instead of just pressing the reverse button then the accelerate button, try to reverse then follow up with an e-brake and accelerate at the same time then let go of e-brake and accelerate. By doing this repetitively, you will find yourself quicker to be able to accelerate in a forward fashion. There are many cool ways to teleport your car further ahead than where you once originally were, and also in more convenient places. When watching a high skill runner's PB, keep in mind where they reset the car and what angles they are on. I will showcase to you some neat resets you can do with your car in various categories such as all story missions, any percent and also no mission warps. Now that you have taken a look at the tips I've provided, you are ready to start your learning and practice. But what are the good ways of practicing this game? I highly recommend playing through the game and following the coin route that you wish to have. Whilst finishing each level, when it gives you the option to save, I recommend doing so. This allows you to do full level practice, which involves grabbing the coins you require with whatever coin route you do. This helps improve muscle memory and consistency. If you cannot be bothered going into a heavy detail of practice, you can always tick the unlock all missions mod and make a save. This way you can just go ahead and practice whatever mission you desire. Lastly, before starting your full game runs, I highly recommend to download the timing program LiveSplit. LiveSplit also has a load removal feature. If you assign your game and category correctly, once this step is done, you are ready to run the game. 
Thank you all for having a listen to some of the ideas I have to share, which I believe will help your learning curve with The Simpsons Hit and Run. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and I may provide more content like this in the future. Thanks guys, and peace out.